try very much so to be very timely. God is a great God, isn't he? Yes. He's a great God. There was something that the Lord had shared with me, and it's the reason why I'm sharing it with you, because we've been really praying and fasting, pastors and, and bishop. God bless you. Good to see you, old friend. And uh, we've been praying and, and, and seeking God very heavily because the church, God bless you, apostle, the church of the Lord is about to experience something. And it's our desire to be prepared. Convocation makes us prepared. Because it is the only time where God calls the Holy See together. And they wash themselves symbolically. And they wash out the things that would prohibit them. And in other words, be an impediment so that it would get in the way of their hearing of what the Spirit has to say to the church. But it is such a trump of God that sounds and calls them to wash themselves and set themselves aside three days in fastings and prayer and coming away from their work and coming away from their labor to do one thing only, hear what the Spirit has to say unto the church. How can we, as the psalmist just finished singing to us in ministry, how can we go any further? How can we make it one second further except we hear the word of the Lord? Sisters and brothers, the Lord has called you into this wonderful city of Baltimore where lots of the saints have gathered and have been bred here. But here you are in the midst of it, and God is calling you to hear this word. Three things the Lord said to me. And the first thing I'm going to tell you is the first word. And if you'll say it with me, it's what the Spirit is saying to us all. Now. So, just listen. Now. Now. Now, now, now. The Holy Spirit just says, now, 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 now. We have been praying and praying and praying and praying again and praying some more. And now the Holy Spirit says to us as this glorious August body of believers, now is salvation come and deliverance. And the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ for the accuser of the brother is cast down who accuses us day and night before our God and we have overcome him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimony that comes demonic hell high water he's able to bring us out. Now. The immediacy of the word. The immediacy of what he said. Now. We, you know, we keep looking for God do this, do that. He said it's now, 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 now. Now, when, 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 most of us as the, the, the leaders the, and the princes in God's church want to know now, when is it, when is it, when is the time come, when is the time come, when is the next phase, when is the next appointment, what am I supposed to do, when do I do, what do I say, where do I go, what do I, now, we have finally arrived to now. Not one second, not one minute do we have to wait any longer. Not one month, one week, one day, one millisecond, one trillisecond, one billisecond. We don't have to wait any longer because the Spirit says, now! When do I do? When do I touch? When I move? When I? He said, now, now, now. Reach over and tell somebody God said, now. Ah. Tell him if you're going to get a prayer through, pray it. If you're going to reach out and touch and heal, somebody do it. 
if you're going to reach out and live the life that God has already inspired for you to do, do it. If you're going to preach the sermon, honey, stop waiting over it. Preach it. If you're going to build God a house, start building it. Now is salvation come. And the deliverance of our God and his Christ. Sisters and brothers, when we look at what he's saying to us, he also points us to three things in, when we look at the saint. The saint called Luke. The saint said here, while I was listening, the apostles had shared with me some of the things that Jesus had done. And he opens up something very vicarious as we look at this Eglarian uh, outlook on the things of the gospel of Jesus Christ. He declares to us three lost things. We see a lost coin and then we see a lost lamb. Last but not least, we see a lost son. Mm. And in everything that was lost, at the end of it, as Jesus declares his parabolic outline so that he could hide it from the, the arrogant and from the proud and from the muttering, complaining eyes, he was setting forth a church and a mission in the midst of vain religiosity. Religiosity had gotten to the point until it stifled, it stank, it, it became a yoke and a burden, it became so so a vow with its, its, its images of having the appearance of loving God where within they were decayed. It was riddled with form and all of its liturgies that became vain because those that did them did them for ulterior motives instead of hooking into divine relationship with God. Mm -hmm. There is something unique about what people have declared years have gone by. One scholar says it this way. A man that finds and knows God, knows the will of God, has done well. And he said, and then he who has not only found God and knows God, but understands him even does better. But last but not least, this man who knows and understands and then does the will of God is the greatest of them all. Mm. Many of us know God. We are understanding about the ubiquitousness of our God, the holiness of God, knowing that there is a creatorial power. But do we obey him? Mm. Many of us have been touched by him. So we have the familiarity of the greatness of the omnipotence of his power. We know the touch of God. We've seen the miraculous in our lives and in the lives of others around us. But at the end of the day, still do we submit to the obedience of that God. Mm. Some of us preach his sermons, sing his songs, uh, dance his dance, clap, his, clap our hands. We give his praise, give our offerings. Um, we come in and out and frequent among the fellowship of the great glorious believers of this awesome God. But how many of us out of the holy sea of God can say we have submitted ourselves to the obedience of God? Ah, we won't belong. Touch somebody next to you. This holy convocation, we won't belong. The preacher got to go home. She got to go home. Sisters and brothers, you have to realize we are in a dilemma and the dilemma has a solution. Most of the times we hear about the problems, but there is a solution. And the solution is that God has defined this time as a time of paradox where it would be dark but yet light. Where it would be good but yet evil where there would be such a massive influx of those that are coming out of the darkness into this marvelous light but at the same time there would be an aggregation of believers who have left their first love we were somewhere between the house of Philadelphia and that of the Laodiceans we would have those things that we are working in the house of Philadelphia who have almost forgotten 
forgotten who it is that we love but notice it says you have yet but a little strength just strengthen those things that remain that are almost about to die and somewhere from that to Laodicean where we are so educated and so degreed and we are so knowledge heavy we are agnostic in our thinking because our Gnosticism has caused us to lean upon our own intellect more than the auspices and the power of the one true God. Um, look at somebody say the preacher's almost finished. Uh, sisters and brothers, uh, we hang in the peripheral of the balance. Uh, we hang in the balance of being religious, uh, having a form of godliness, uh, and then on the other hand, uh, but denying the power thereof. Uh, we know God can do it, uh, but how many of us are willing to let God do it? Mm -hmm. Our intellect says uh, he's not moving fast enough. Uh, he's not doing it my way. Uh, I'm losing ground and respect with the fellas. Uh, my peers are moving ahead of me uh, so I can do this with my own knowledge and with my own influence and use my own abilities to make it happen. Uh, there is a rare thing in the midst of this uh, paradigm shift there are those who have taught us to wait on the Lord and then those that have said I've waited long enough I'm going to make my own way sisters and brothers here we are in the 21st century and God is speaking to us in holy convocation a place where we slow down our minds where we rewind our life where we come back to introspect of the things that God would have us first do we look Look at what we've accomplished and said. But did we do it under the auspices of God? Or did I make my own way? Number three, we, we go into the situation of saying, Lord, what is it that you first assigned me to? And where did I get off track? Convocation is good. It's good. It's good. It's good for us. Because it makes us back up and line up. God's getting ready to talk to me. Am I ready to hear it? Am I ready to receive it? Am I ready to respond to him? He is in charge of his house? Or am I thinking I'm in charge? Reach out and touch somebody and say, it's going it's to be a good, it's, gonna, it's all good, it's, it's all good. So God tells us in holy convocation, the year of his manifestation in his kingdom, he gives us this first word, and that word is now. That means present time in this very moment it means right now look at somebody and say right now in this present moment uh, tell them in this present moment in this present moment most of us are having conflict because we can't even hold the present moment we're so influenced by outside things until we can't hold a, a true present moment we're easily distracted we're easily distracted by the things that surround us when God is saying now listen listen very clear holy people of the most high God it's the enemy's job to come around to seek whom he may devour there must be an agreement in the earth for those things that are spoken in a heavens now watch if God has said now nah, and he has is there someone on the earth that can say it's my time now uh, there must be someone who facilitates the word of God now watch he speaks a word but there's got to be somebody on the end, the end of that word to receive the word 